episode thirteen of the complete bachelor by oliver onions this librivox recording is in the public domain episode thirteen potluck do you know butterfield bassishaw said i don't know how you get along that is get along you know as you do the remark didn't seem particularly illuminating but he had been silent for ten minutes and this appeared to be the result of his cogitation no i said encouragingly well you know what i mean he replied i mean how you manage in the way you do you know never to you've never hang it butterfield why don't you get married oh i answered i see of course i didn't quite catch the idea at first of course why don't i get married yes he replied much relieved you you should you know it's the finest thing in the world being engaged that is you've no idea really butterfield he seemed quite eager about it i put my feet comfortably on the fender and waited for him to expand he kept his eyes on the fire you know he went on slowly you'll feel awfully lonely and all that soon that is when caroline goes i mean matchmaking is never a man's line he draws back at the very intimate point he should press home arthur did his best mrs loring had probably been talking to him i shall miss her very much i replied very much indeed but to whom do you propose to marry me he seemed rather abashed and a trifle impatient don't be an ass he said i could not be certain owing to the firelight that he blushed but i chanced it i didn't object to these palpable attempts to marry me to millicent dixon but it was disparaging to my intelligence that i should be supposed not to notice them anyway the male element was a new feature in the alliance and do you think that she and i would be a well-matched pair i asked he professed a hypocritical ignorance as to what i meant i laughed mrs loring i answered can give you points arthur you would apparently marry me on general principles she particularizes we were waiting for caroline and millicent millicent and bassishaw were dining with us that evening and bassishaw had lately i knew been a good deal perturbed on my account more than once he had timidly suggested that a woman's hand in a place made all the difference you know and i had caught him glancing round my rooms with something of a disparaging valuation of their contents when he should take caroline away his friendly concern in itself was deserving of my gratitude but with this qualification that i don't believe he was above suspecting that i should take to drink in the imminent solitude of my bereft apartments i was extracting from him the fervent declaration that i couldn't imagine how splendid it being engaged made you feel and that to know that there was one upon whom etc etc forever when millicent and caroline entered we rose to greet them how do you do millicent i said i'm glad to see you heaven she replied let me come near the fire i'm as cold as a seminary breakfast how do you do arthur what a blessed blaze don't go away arthur bassishaw had gone over to the table where caroline was making the last unnecessary arrangements and was having his flower pinned on oh his circulation's all right i remarked we were once like that and millicent looking over her shoulder laughed at me and said the dear infants dinner was served and we took our places i faced caroline while millicent who was still chilly and didn't mind the fire at her back looked over the flowers at bassishaw an arrangement as can be diagrammatically proved offering facilities for between-deck pressing of feet on a diagonal plan and which appeared to suit my young sister admirably i gave her an amused glance which millicent intercepted and carrie tried unsuccessfully to look as if she hadn't done it never mind him carrie millicent said reassuringly he's an envious old man who's wasted his youth and he's getting cynical his failing years won't permit him to do such things himself and his conscience begins to hurt him this was the woman without whom on bassishaw's opinion my abode fell short of completeness 
my failing years miss dixon i returned bring with them a certain charity nevertheless allow me to point out your reason for condoning such practices which is she queried that you are quite capable of doing the same thing yourself she laughed and bassishaw looked puzzled oh i'm not tottering to my fall yet she retorted i have all sorts of little surprises in my blood you forbid reply miss dixon i answered you take refuge in a position where man can only maintain a respectful and incredulous silence a woman's years are she challenged and an income tax return i am beneath your roof mr butterfield she replied with the dignity of st james comedy caroline evidently disapproved strongly she caught my eye i don't think you're a bit nice this evening rollo she said if i were millicent she straightened her back i wouldn't dine with you don't take any notice of him milly dear perhaps i replied the disparity in years is too great think so bassishaw i looked round the flowers at him he seemed rather embarrassed and said nothing i filled millicent's glass and turned to her what do you think bassishaw was saying to me just before you came in i received a kick bassishaw behind the flowers was very red indeed heaven forbid that i should guess millicent replied men are frail creatures he was speaking i continued of women as a domestic institution no home he said was complete without one considered decoratively she gave an air of brightness bassishaw must have been as busy in his pedipulations as an organist for caroline peremptorily held out her glass to be replenished i continued as a companion he said much could be forgiven her and she had admirable managing gifts millicent bowed across the flowers the sex thanks you arthur she said it is quite the proper point of view for a young man as for this belated bachelor myself he never did nor ever will think rightly on the subject bassishaw looked at me reproachfully i didn't mean what you think i meant he said uncomfortably forgive me you meant much more than i say i think you meant i meant i meant he replied and then apologetically well you are getting on you know and you've missed so much really rollo if you like being alone a man who's never you don't mind my saying it well he doesn't know that's all bassishaw subsided rather incoherently but applied himself to his plate with conviction i looked at millicent who glanced sidelong fun under her lids what you say is perfectly convincing as a proposition arthur she remarked the man who's never never does know but the application is another matter from report there were hopes for rollo butterfield that he had failed to justify he flirted notoriously thank you gracious lady i replied complacently leaning back at my ease that is the name the world gives it your conduct with dolly hemingway was shameless marriage would certainly have been an illogical conclusion i admitted and violet mellish told me herself dear little vi i approved her conversation never did lack the relish of revelation you must not suppose arthur that i have not had the normal past that my years would guarantee you appear to think so bassishaw didn't seem to see it at all he fumbled with his fork i expect you've had your fancies of course he replied but i don't mean just fancies that's only flirting the man who cannot flirt never sees that the power to do so is a gift of the gods arthur held by negative constancy flirtation i replied is not the simple affair you think arthur it is not necessarily a matter of twilights and conservatories and does not even always demand privacy for a flirtation with zest there is nothing like having an audience is that not so millicent spare me the revelation of my ignorance millicent returned moving her chair an inch or two from the now importunate fire and looking over her shoulder it is possible 
the only requisites are a woman a secret and as many spectators as have not the use of their eyes i continued those granted you may riot in innuendo and your reputation go scatheless it is the very button on the cap bassishaw could think of nothing more original to say than that it was playing with edged tools carrie was directing the removal of plates i devoted my attention to millicent i had one very serious fancy though millicent i remarked shall i tell you i trust it is not unfit for the children she replied looking this time beneath the flowers at bassishaw the knowledge of good and evil from your point of view might not be of advantage to them caroline looked round curiously oh rollo what was that she said you never told me no i inquired incredulously and you my sister too ah well it was this summer mornings at seven i used to go across the fields with a bathing towel on my return i was generally met by i never mentioned her name it would be indiscreet said millicent discretion i answered is the better part of flirtation they were lovely mornings and there was a style a rather high style a distinct opportunity i looked carefully away from millicent and turned to bassishaw yes he said appreciatively and what happened i fancy i continued that she always met me on my side of the stile so that we always had to get over it bassishaw seemed to approve the strategy nice girl he asked she combined i replied the harmlessness of the dove with the wisdom of the serpent for she used to feel tired when we got there and rest there was just room for two caroline was interested and when was this rollo she asked my dear carrie i returned you had just begun german you were at school well this woman of mine would pull a flower to pieces or light a cigarette for me or some such foolishness she knew the exact distance at which her hair would touch my face if it were a little tumbled and so on millicent made the criticism that the least she could have done under the circumstances was to have sprained her ankle and who was it carrie asked eagerly the woman who presumed to condemn my carrying on with dolly hemingway and violet mellish sat smiling in frank innocence she whose ignorance of such matters was to be scrupulously respected sat with unconsciousness on her brow and gave graceful attention to my story she who had called me a belated bachelor who had spoken of my failing years and my perspective of hesitating singleness and above all whose memory needed no hint as to what i was going to say dissembled without a quiver who was it caroline repeated the name is the least essential part of the affair i replied we are concerned with the style yes the style millicent said what happened were she to ask me herself i should only whisper i returned she leaned back and laughed outright you are too considerate on her account to make the story very interesting she remarked i swear i could finish it better myself one day you tried to kiss her millicent had chosen the hazardous line of safety she had told the truth i stole a glance at her under the cover of the flowers i tried not to i replied and she was angry she did her best to be angry she was till the next morning i answered and then you begged her pardon i did nothing of the kind i was not so young as all that but at least you were sorry millicent suggested not from that day to this i replied it was too perfect millicent moved her chair a little further and as she did so it might have been done purposely you never can tell with millicent her foot touched mine gently and as it remained there a moment i felt more like bassishaw than i would have cared to admit she has since told me i don't mind saying that i have good eyes be that as it may the mischief in her own was for a second tempered to an expression that was nobody's business but mine i felt tempted to forswear my theory and to regret the presence of an audience 
she rose gaily this is all very well she said but it is a bad thing to have the fire at your back be good enough to put the screen up arthur arthur did so but the story caroline persisted impatiently she wanted to get to the reconciliation with tears how does the story go on it went on i replied in much the same way it is not quite finished yet she looked a virtuous reproof i am surprised rollo she said that you should have behaved in so indiscreet a fashion i think that on that occasion it was just as well there was nobody there i should be exceedingly sorry to witness any such proceeding it would make me extremely uncomfortable i laughed and stroked my little sister's hair what liqueur will you take millicent i asked End of episode thirteen